part one of the Design Dreamers. Who are you? De- <laughs> oh, who am I? <laughs> we said we were not going to talk over each other. We're going to try really hard. We are. So. I'm sorry. We do that all the time. Yes. <laughs> I just <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I'm D. I'm the other half of the Design Dreamers. And this is Nathaniel. Look at everybody. Hey, Nate. Look at everybody. There Say you hi. go. And hi. that's Nate. He likes to add comments on and off during our, our taping here. So you may hear him and may see his head popping in and out. So I like so it when you're he says, there. E-gads. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so we're really happy to have you back with us today, or if this is your first time, we're really glad to have you with us for the first time. Um, mm-hmm. We're two sisters, flesh yes. sisters, like, I'm not going to tell you which one's older because she doesn't like to talk about it. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey. So, hey. Um, we always start off with an inspirational saying, so this time it's get out of your own way. I like it. Look at the snail. Aw. He's a snail. Yes. Yeah. Cute. I thought this was an appropriate saying, um, get out of your own way because sometimes we do that. Sometimes we, you know, they have a saying, the hardest thing to get through is your front door, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes like in my mind, I'm like, I can't do something. I think I can't do something. And therefore then it prevents me from, from doing it. So get out of your own way go through that door, just push yourself and you'll be amazed at what you can do. I agree with that. A lot of times, the only reason you don't proceed with being creative yeah. in a certain direction, well, enough of the egads, Nate, the, uh, that you don't go ahead and, and make something or like try something new is because, oh, I can't do that. Oh, it's going to be too hard. Oh, you know, you can come up with a five million reasons why you can't do it but you really don't know if you can't do it you just need to put that fear aside and move ahead and that's like with your make today so yes yes. and I have to say that I learned some of this um about getting out of your own way from my husband because everybody is amazed at what all he can do but I watch him and I observe and he doesn't let himself say he can't do something Mm -hmm. he doesn't know how to do it he'll figure it out even yes, if, even if that means watching YouTube t- tutorials or whatever, or just getting that, he's not afraid to try something, and that's why he can do so much, and he's good at it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. He, like you said, he doesn't let it stop him if he's not aware of how to do it. He figures it out by just figuring it out with his past knowledge or looking up information. He's always learning. And that's one thing I think as adults, sometimes we do, we just kind of stop and go, oh, you know, that's it. I'm not learning. We don't make ourselves become curious or try to figure things out. And, and we need to do that to keep our brains young. Yeah, well, you know, somebody, sometimes they have that saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And people get that in their mind. Oh, I'm too old to learn or, you know, yeah. I've never done it before, so I can't do it. Forget that. Get out of your own way. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so what are we gonna be showing today, Dee? Well, first I'm showing my cup of nice warm green tea. What do you have in yours? I have ice cold by B-A-I, it's a coconut drink. Yes, it is, and they're good. So get yourself something to drink and chill out and spend some time with us. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <I'll> <laughs> You'll be there. Yeah. So. Okay, my my make is a pair of slacks. I had, my sister and I had found at one of the thrift stores before COVID started, Mm -hmm. uh, this wonderful, nice gray, you can, can you hear that? The rustling of it? So it's a bottom weight fabric, but it has stretched two ways. It stretches that way, stretches that way. It almost has like spandex in it, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure it does. Mm-hmm. It's really a nice fabric. Um, so I wanted to make some slacks out of it. So what I did was Simplicity 1073. Okay. You know, can you see that or is the glare too the glare much on there? Good. There you go. Simplicity 1073. Yep. And these are the slacks. Okay. Um, no zipper, elastic waist. And I, what I liked about them was they had this nice thick band and it's an elastic waist. Mm-hmm. which is nice. 
um, it has pockets, pleats. And, and once I made these, I remember why I don't have too many of them in the style. It tends to make you a little larger in the front than you want to, but, it, but it's a nice style for trousers or dress pants. These are gonna serve me well. They fit perfectly. It's a, it's a easy, it says, the pattern says easy to sew, okay? Mm -hmm. So here we go again. Oh, the glare, I apologize for the glare. The pattern says easy to sew. Well, <laughs> if you know what you're doing, it's easy to sew. I love the pockets. I, and, and actually, you know, I don't know if you can see, but I did a nice detail on the, yeah. on the top stitching there. Mm -hmm. the, um, the instructions were not all that complete. The pockets, I never had put in a pocket where the pocket itself was just a flat piece and then you folded it over and part of the pocket actually becomes part of the side of the pants. Oh, wow. That's different, it's, isn't it? It is very different. And the pocket itself came clear out here and then you folded it over hmm. and then you stitched it down to make the pocket. And <laughs> the instructions as to how to fold the pocket, I found very, very confusing. That's because of um, an easy pattern. <laughs> yeah, these easy to sew patterns, I don't know. Um, so what I ended up doing is I laid, uh, you know, of course I laid it out on my sewing table, the, the pieces, and I put the pocket on there and I kind of folded it and kind of fiddled with it until I got it the way that it looked uh, finished on the outside. Then I took and sewed it up according to how they set it, but they didn't show you how to fold it. They didn't. They didn't show any of that. And also when it came to the part, if you've not sewn a lot of slacks, it can be confusing. You can sew the, the, the two back pieces together, the two back legs. And I found that very confusing. I have sometimes a hard time with flipping things backwards. This was not very clear on how to do that. So I actually pulled out instructions from another pattern of slacks that I had made that I went, I remember, oh, these went together so easy. The instructions were good. Once I pulled those out, I went, oh yeah, I can, I know how to put the legs together. I have trouble always when I do slacks and I put the legs and raglan sleeves. Those are my two things I invariably <laughs> sew wrong the first time around. <laughs> yeah. So I do have a question yet about the pockets. Yeah. So the little detail that you did, the little stitching that you did on the pocket, that yeah. was that done then before you added, that has to be done before you added the pocket, right? Or no? No, because you have to, this is part of the pocket. The pocket lines, the lining in, inside here yeah. on the inside and it folds and comes out to the side here. This is all the pocket. Right. I've never put one in like that. Uh -oh ever this was the first time usually I just put them you know in the seam mm -hmm. and I, I like the way it turned out yeah it looks nice yeah but I don't the instructions were not very good on it yeah so yes I did this top stitching before I sewed the side seam up and put on the the, the band waistband okay yeah. all right very good yeah nice yeah yeah so are you happy with the sizing of it yeah, for me, the sizing was good. Um, I don't know what size did I make? Did I make the, the larger size? Usually I always get them. Oh yes, I did. I made the 14 in these because I like my clothes a little looser than most people. Okay. Um, and of course, again, there you, there you go with the measurements. I, I wasn't really detailed when I purchased the pattern because sometimes I fall in, it depends. I have gone anywhere from an extra small to a large, which takes you sometimes into a larger category, which would be a 16, which would be an entirely different pattern. Pattern. Yeah. They don't have a 16 size in that, in that pattern. In that packet. Yeah. Yeah. Packet. Yes. So, yeah. But I love them. They fit well. For good. me, I'm very, very happy with them. Good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So what, I'm anxious to see what you did. I am so excited about this. Dory was just concerned about making this because she's not done one. And, well, yeah. And, and she was like, I can do this. She did the, what she did, got out of her shell because she was like, nope, I'm not going to do it. I really, really like this. I want to do it. Yeah. 
Yes, that's true. So I used a McCall's, McCall's 7513. Oh, yes, with a peplum. It's so cute there. Yes. And yes. I made this view here. I did make an adjustment because if you can see, it has buttons that go all the way down. So there yes. is an adjustment you'll see that I made. Uh -huh. I did make this in a size 18. Um, the measurements for me would have been a size 16. However, I'm thinking, well, I want to put stuff underneath it when I wear it. So I'm going a little heavier clothes. Yeah. So I'll make it a little larger. It's a good thing I made it larger. Because <laughs> now it's just right and I can't wear the heavy sweaters under it. So it will become a spring fall type jacket. You know, it's not something I'm going to wear in the dead of winter, I don't think. But um, yeah, I made view B. And I absolutely love it. Um, I'll show you it here a little bit. I made it out of this mini cord and this mini cord is um, fabric that I had in my stash. Um, the mm -hmm. fabric is probably, I probably have had it like seven years. And I don't it's even know the fabric I picked it up at, you know? Yeah. So, so this is the jacket. I lined the jacket and that's the first oh. time I've ever done anything like that. Beautiful. So I lined the jacket. Yeah, it turned out so good. Is it okay to say I'm proud of it? <laughs> yes, it's okay. You did a wonderful job. Thank you. So in lining the jacket, um, you slip stitch the lining, the pap, the papillon, is that what you call it? Peplon. The peplon. peplon. <laughs> I'm making my own words up here. The peplon is uh, not lined. So I, that's the way it was in the pattern. So I didn't line it. I did, however, finish my seams though. I mean, very nice. Yes, that's a good detail to make it more yeah. finished, polished, yeah. elevates it a level. And it's hard to see because it's dark fabric, but you'll see it when, when you see me model it. But th it does have pleats in the back. Yeah, it's difficult. I can't tell. Yeah, you can't tell. You can't even see that. Not able to. Yeah. And a little bit there. Yeah. But you'll see it when I, when I have it on. Um, and there is one thing that I wanted to mention that I that I said that I changed and that was the buttons. So I have five buttons. I've always been one that feels like an odd number is better than an even number. Mm -hmm. so I put five on instead of six and I've got them closer together than what they had them because I don't have it going all the way down. The right. Track, you know, and I decided to make my own button flaps. And I like button tabs, it's, it's, I'm yeah. having a hard time seeing that. It's so you might want to put your hand behind him. Put your hand behind, there you go. So a contrast. So you see that it's white and that I yeah. did on purpose so that it would give some design to it. And I purposely left these so that they would ravel a little bit. It was the style oh. I wanted with it. Oh, okay. So, yes. So that kind of updates it a little bit then. Yes, I think yeah. so. It makes it a little bit more, yeah. So when it's buttoned, you'll see that it goes like that. Oh, you'll see uh -huh. it. I'll, actually, do you want to see it on me? I'll model it for you. Okay, sure. Yes, I'd love to see how it fits. All right, let's, let's show you. Okay. So what did you think? I think it's adorable. Uh, it really looks nice. It looks nicer on you than what, it just looks nice. It looks really nice. It fits well, it's cute, very stylish. Yeah, I really, really love it. I love the way the back is. Yes. And uh, and I am happy even with the tabs that I made. Now, um, if you'd like, I can insert a little tutorial on how I did the tabs since they're not in any pattern. 
this is something we did out of our heads. My husband and I, you know, we brainstormed it and talked about it and came up with it. You want to see how we did it? I would love to see how you did it. I'm sure everybody else would too. That would be great. Yes. Okay, I'm going to yeah. show you how I made these button flaps. Um, I didn't want to put button holes on the on the jacket itself, like the pattern called for. Um, so we decided to make these little flaps to give it a little more style, a little more definition. And we did the buttonholes in a con in a white color because we knew it would stand out and give it pop. So these are the flaps. I'm going to show you how I made them. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's buttoned. But just to give you an idea how they are. So what I did was I took extra fabric that I had left over and um, I took, I had a much longer strip than this, but this for just demonstration purposes. I took a measured two and a half inch strip and I cut it with my rotary cutter. And then I took my two and a half strip, inch strip, folded it in two and took it to my sewing machine. You can press it if you want, or this, because it's a, a mini core, it really keeps itself intact, real easy. Um, intact, I don't know if that's the correct word, but anyway, it keeps itself closed. So then I just sewed like that. And then um, it, I trimmed the extra off after between the stitching and the rough edges. And then I had to turn it inside out. Inside out? Right side out? <laughs> I had to turn it. Turn it. So um, we tried different things that we had saw on um, different YouTubes and stuff. Um, and nothing seemed to work. Being corduroy, it's a little bit thicker fabric to get through. So my husband devised this little hook. Let's see if you can see it. It's a little hook on a long piece of wire. And so then we just hooked it on there and then we worked it through in, and turned it inside out. This one's already inside out, right side out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, this one is correctly done. But I just wanted to show you the little um, thing that he made uh, to help me be able to turn that. So, I know there are things that you can buy that does turning too. Anyhow, this is a, an example of one that I didn't use, but I want to show you what I did. So after I turned it inside out, I, I then pressed it. And then I took my measuring gauge. And I measured three and a half inches between from the start of one to do the next one. And do the next one. So I just had it in my sewing machine like this. Now th these I'm showing you didn't are ones I did not use. But that's the glory of doing it on a separate piece of fabric than rather doing it on the coat. So if I had done one of these and it had been crooked and it was on the coat, that's the way it would be. But having it on the tabs, I could now decide to use that tab or not to use that tab. So then what I did was I um, sewed right here. I don't know if you can see it. I sewed so that where the tab was going to end, that was sewed. I then took and marked my jacket and measured between how far apart I wanted each of the tabs to be. I measured those, I pinned them down, and then I sewed them all the way around like that, okay? So at first it was just this edge where the buttonhole was going to be that I had sewed down and then I cut them. Just cut them right there, right there, right there. So then I took the individual ones, put them on here and sewed them in, in place. After I had opened up, actually I opened up the buttonhole before I sewed it in place in case I um, would ruin one of the buttonholes, which I did. I actually cut through one. Let's see if I can find it. I cut through, yeah, here, I cut through this one too far. <laughs> so now it was no good. But that's okay because I made plenty of these extra flaps that I could use. So <clears throat> after I cut open the buttonhole, I did mine with a seam ripper. Some people use um, razor blades, but I used a seam ripper. Cut those open. Then I sewed them in place after I measured them, pinned them, sewed them in place. 
Uh, so then, to know where I was going to put my buttons, I took my fabric, laid it down, and I used a marking pen, marking pencil, and I stuck it right where I was going to put the button. So then I would know that the button would be exactly where it needed to be. So let me show you on scrap piece of fabric here what I did. So let's say this is the coat, this is the tab. The tab's already sewed onto the coat. I need one that's open. Well, let's just let's just say this one was the open one. And this was my, so then I just got this wet so that would make its mark. Then I would know exactly where to sew the button. So I don't know if you can see, it's a really tiny mark. That's all I needed to know so I would know where to uh, sew the button on. So that's how I made the um, button so flaps. That's for my how coat. we made our tabs for for the buttons. And the the cool thing is, um, I think I mentioned it in that video, is that if I was to make a mistake on a buttonhole, oh, on the buttonhole, it it wouldn't ruin the coat because it's on the tab, and you can make extra tabs. If, yes. As long as you have the extra fabric, you can make as many tabs as you want. Right. You know? Yes, I think that's creative, and and thank you for showing us how to do that because. Not not all of our brains are as creative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of nice to have a, a husband to brainstorm it with. It know? is, yeah. Yeah, and that he enjoys that kind of thing. Yeah, not all hobbies do. Yes, yeah. right, yeah. So that's all I have to show today. What about you? I, I think that was great. I think it was wonderful. Yeah, okay. so, so, well, before we leave, have you had anything new and exciting happen to you recently? Are you talking to me or to the audience? Uh, to you. <laughs> what exciting happened to me? I can think of something new and exciting you're doing. You're getting your fabric all put together in your shelving in your sewing room. Yes, Instead I am. Instead of in bins, she's putting in them in shelvings and she's organizing them and she's actually individually wrapping them on boards. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited to see that when she's done. I know she's been working hard on that. Ironing her fabric, getting it all ready to use so she can just pick it out and pull. Yeah. Yeah, I am excited. I'm measuring each piece, writing down how, what, how uh, wide it is, what the length is. Um, yeah, so it is pretty exciting. And that's why I've only made the jacket, which, which surprised me because I thought the jacket would take me way longer than what it did. You did, you thought, you the pattern said it was, did the pattern say it was an easy pattern? No. No? But, no. oh, you read, you read on pattern review. People said that it was not hard to make. Yeah, well, they said it was, um, they said to watch it because it runs small, especially in the arms, which I didn't which, find it, I didn't find it too small for my arms at all. Yeah, yeah. But, so. um, yeah, they said it was pretty, fairly easy, so, I mean. So, well, so then now you know what Dory's going to do when she's all done with her sewing room. What is and co and COVID is over with and we can visit. She's going to come and help me do my sewing room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can already tell it makes a huge difference. A yeah. huge difference. Yeah. yeah. I can hardly wait. I mean, like, and, and I love touching fabric. It's kind of a weird thing, isn't it? I love touching it. Well, no, it just means you're a tactile person. That's yeah, fine. I'm tactile. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like touching the fabric and smoothing it when I, and I'm like, oh, and I'm like, oh, I love this. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love it. I want to sew. I want to sew. I want to sew. I want to sew. <laughs> like, I'm not so. taking time to sew because I got to organize. I got to finish organizing. Yeah. I mean, I've totally even repositioned things in that room to make it so it's more open. And yeah. Yeah. And you'll find you'll work better with that. They always say, yeah, if, an uncluttered environment gives you an uncluttered mind. Something correct, like and you're able to focus more. So yeah. so hopefully we're not going to be running around too well. We'll run around some after COVID, but you'll have to make some time to make sure you come to my house and help me get my room. I will. I will. I, I yeah. would enjoy doing that. I definitely Yay! Fun. It's just a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, that's what I wanted. All right. Yeah. So just to remind you of our inspiration, Get out of your own way. Get out of your shell. Do your thing. Don't be afraid to try something. I mean, mm -hmm. even that sewing room is something that, I mean, for years I thought, oh, I should do something about it. And, and my goal 
it's probably an impossible goal. I wanted to get it all done by January 1st, but I can't believe this is the middle of December and I know yeah. I have to get it done by January 1st. There's just no way. Yeah. So, so keep working at it. I am. I, I take every spare minute that I can and I, you know, pull up another bin and go through it and do it. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. So, all right. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> well, over talking now, we're speaking over each other again. Go ahead. first. Oh, <laughs> Nathan, say goodbye to everybody. Say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe, like, and leave comments. We try to answer those comments, and we we get so much joy out of um hearing from you guys. It's like chatting with friends. We love it. Yeah, and you didn't let me say goodbye, just Nathan. Well, you snooze. Okay, your now it's my turn. <laughs> goodbye, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed your cup of whatever, and we'll. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye.